I packed a handgun. <laughs> hey, this video is sponsored by McDonald's. Okay, not really. But I do feel like having a Diet Coke next to me right now, so I'm going to. Uh, my name is Brian. This is the Trifecta Handgun YouTube channel. We talk mostly about handgun hunting on this channel. So if you're into that, I hope you'll stick around. If you're not into that, hey, why don't you stick around anyway? You may learn something uh, different, something to try if you're a hunter at all. Maybe this is something that you want to uh, delve into. Today is one of my favorite topics, or what I think is one of the most important videos that I can make of the year, and that is using a monopod to hunt with. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, why would I want to use a monopod? Isn't it normal to use a uh, tripod with uh, a handgun rest like this? Wouldn't I have more success? And I think this is one of those things where I wish I had like a hundred people who like to handgun hunt and I would line them all up and I would show them this method and I'd have them just try it and I would be there to like, you know, give them tips along the way, things that I learned. And uh, I think it would open up a ton of eyes, but I don't have that ability. It's just me here and uh, hopefully I can show you guys some things on video enough to spark your interest to at least try this. So uh, a monopod, well, a tripod has some, some upsides and some downsides. The downside of using a tripod is it has three legs on it and we tend to hunt on uneven ground. So if you're out there, you can set it up really uh, precise the way you want it. But if you see a game animal comes somewhere else and you have to move it in order to line up, well, now you have to realign the legs. Uh, you may have to adjust the legs in and out or at least move them in and out. And you may not have time to do that or you may spook the animal trying to do that. Uh, so anyway, that's a downside. Another downside is it's not quite as packable, it's not as, as lightweight um, as a monopod would be. I think the biggest downside for us in the Midwest is you can't take a tripod up into a tree stand, at least not very easily. Most, most tree stands, you know, try to spread the legs out it's just not going to work, especially if you have to shoot to one side or the other or behind you. With a monopod, we're going to be able to do that, and I'm going to demonstrate that today. So what are the upsides to using a tripod? Well, it's always ready. So if you have a game animal and this is your tripod and me looking down my gun, my tripod's here, and you have a game animal that's most likely going to walk in front of that, well, it may be the way to go, especially if you don't have a, a long trek and you have a, like a, a shooting house or a blind or even some natural vegetation you can set that tripod up in. And you're pretty sure that game animal is going to walk across there, maybe a, a river bottom or across to some sort of utility right away. What are the upsides to using a monopod? Well, it's going to be a much smaller footprint. It's going to be lightweight. It's going to be packable. Uh, those are some upsides. Uneven ground is not a problem because you're not trying to set up three legs. It's just one. So even if you have to adjust it, it's just one leg. You can do that very, very quickly. I think the biggest advantage is I can move my monopod from left to right to center to behind me all very, very quickly without much movement. I think that's a huge, huge advantage. Using a monopod is gonna give you some freedom. It's gonna be much more enjoyable because it's lightweight, it's fast. You can hunt using any method you want, a tree stand, a blind, a uh, run and gun, out east, out west, it doesn't matter. It's just, it's so much freedom and it's going, and if you can get the accuracy thing down, which is not that hard, I'm gonna show you some tips today, this is going to be a much more enjoyable experience for you. I want to go through some tips that I think these are really going to help you. And if you have a monopod in the rest, if you want to run grab that right now and, and turn the video off, if you're not in that position yet and you're just thinking about it, then maybe some of these will just 
kind of help you along with that decision. So the first tip I have for you is use as many touch points as you can. So what's a touch point? Well, with the tripod, we have all three legs touching the ground. But with the monopod, we just have that one leg. So we're going to try to create more stability by using other things. For instance, if you can touch the rest to something, or maybe the, the monopod leg itself to something, any part of your body, if you can get a little bit of uh, support that way. Some examples are your knee, your foot. You always want to use your foot, and we'll get into that in just a little bit. Uh, maybe your left hand draping over the top of the rest is always a good idea. That's going to add a little bit of weight. It's also a touch point. Uh, maybe the chair that you took with you. Um, let's see what else. Uh, the front of your blind or your stand. Maybe you have an arm going in front of your stand. You can put the uh, monopod up against that or the fabric of your blind. Uh, maybe clamping your knees together would be a good one. Or there's, you can use the tree itself, and that is an excellent way to gain stability. You can touch the rest of the tree. You can lean back against the tree. So there's just a lot of ways that you can get touch points. But what we're, we're looking for is ways that we can not have to hold the, the uh, monopod steady. Let's take a look at the equipment you're going to need just to get started hunting with a monopod. Let's start with the monopod itself. This is a Manfrotto, or Manfrotto. I guess if you're a Lord of the Rings dude, you're probably like Frodo. But this is called the Element, and it is... About 15 and a half inches when it's all together, easily packable in just about any backpack around. And you can see the gun in the background here as reference. This is a seven and a half inch barreled Ruger Super Blackhawk. These I think you can get for about $39 up to about $59, which to me is a super good deal. I know there's a lot more expensive monopods out there. But this thing is super lightweight. It's aluminum. It looks good. It works good. I don't see any reason to get anything more expensive. So, of course, you're going to pair that up with our Trifecta handgun signature camo handgun rest. I think these retail for $169, which is a great deal. I know I'm a little biased because I'm the one that designed it, but... And I know all the work that goes into making one of these, and it's not easy. But I think that's a great deal, and that's all you need to get started. So, you know, roughly 200 bucks, and you're hunting with a super, super steady platform. I hope you guys can hear me okay. It's a little bit windy, but I thought it was important to do this segment outdoors. What you don't want to do with your monopod is hold it straight up and down. You may think that's a good idea, but there's no bias that way. And what I mean by that is if I hold it straight up and down, it'll go a lot of different directions just depending on where it's just a little bit off balance, but it will never stay straight up. And in that position, it's easy to have a little bit of shake in it. What you want to do is create resistance or create bias by offsetting or holding your monopod at a slant. Let me turn sideways so you can see what I'm talking about. You can see the monopod's not straight up and down, so all the weight is coming back towards me. You could do the same thing going away from you if the uh, situation was better that way for you. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it back and the monopod foot is on the top of my foot and that's one touch point, then I have another on my knee here. And I'm just going to go ahead and adjust my rest just by pushing down on it to where I need to be. And now I'm actually shooting fairly level if I was shooting at a target out here. But my I have a lot of resistance coming back at me and that's going to create more stability. Now the next thing you wanna do is always keep the foot of your monopod on on the top of your foot so if i'm sitting in a chair or in this blind right behind me 
and I'm aimed this way, I'm expecting something to come this way, but all at once, something comes from my right, I can quickly move around just by keeping that monopod on my foot. I can lift my foot up. If I didn't have it on my foot, I would have to go from having the rest like this, and then I have to take my hand off, grab a hold of the pole or the monopod, move it around, and then readjust everything. So by keeping it on my foot, not only am I going to be able to quickly maneuver it, but I also have that consistent point where I'm going to have the monopod exactly on the same place on my leg, the exact same place on my foot, and we all know that consistency leads to accuracy when it comes to shooting or hunting. My next tip for you is to check your level. You always want to be level and with a tripod you can set it up ahead of time but with a monopod you may be aiming at something you might be a little bit canted like that so make sure you have your monopod level just take a look down at it make sure your gun make sure your rest and everything is is level and then go ahead and put it on your target and this only takes a fraction of a second but it is easy to get off level a little bit so that's one thing you want to practice. Practice going through that routine. Practice putting the monopod on your foot. And then make sure you get level before you engage your target. Another tip I have for you is to keep your monopod as short as possible. And use the fattest part of your legs. You can pull the skinny part out and adjust your height with that. But you don't want to do it that way. You want to use the fattest part up here and pull that all the way out first and then work your way down until you have the height that you want. You don't want to use your skinny part because that is not as stable as the fat part of your tripod. Now the reason you want to keep your tripod as low as possible, let me just demonstrate this for you. Well let me first go high. So I have my tripod or my I have my monopod up fairly high and I can shoot at a target that's straight out maybe at 50 or 100 yards away but if something comes in close there's no way I'd have to raise my head up in order to stay on target. Now let's go ahead and shorten this up. I think you guys will get the point already. Now I'm going to exaggerate this as it's pretty low right now. I'd have to scrunch down a lot to see through this, but that's a lot better than up too high. Let me show you what I mean. So I can still get down here and I can see through my scope. I just have to scrunch my neck, everything. And if I have a short shot, maybe a, a 25 yarder, now I can still make that. I can just kind of raise my body up a little bit and adjust the, the uh, uh, handgun rest itself down with my left hand. See that will do it again. So this is me shooting at long distance where I scrunch down and then if something comes in close maybe I'm up in my tree stand and I got to make a close shot at maybe 25 yards or so I can still use my rest to do that which to me is better than trying to shoot offhand. I always use my rest whenever possible when when shooting. I don't like to shoot offhand. So my last tip for you, and there was a lot of them today, so I think this is one of those videos you ought to go back and watch several times, especially if you're going to handgun hunt with this system. Watch it several times with your rest, with your monopod. But my last tip for you is to think about the ways you're going to hunt. If you're kind of east of the Mississippi, and I know I'm stereotyping, and you're going to hunt from a tree stand, then get that tree stand, put it up at ground level, and then go ahead and just sit in there and practice. You don't have to actually shoot, but try to pretend like there's a deer off to your sharp left, off to your sharp right, straight ahead, and just practice going through the motion of how you would actually go through all those. If you're planning on hunting and standing up and taking the shot, well then practice that. 
What if you're out west, west of the Mississippi, you're going to be in the mountains, you're going to be kind of running and gunning, maybe you spot something up high and you're going to make a move on it. So you don't know your exact location, you're not going to be taking a chair with you, anything like that. You're going to most likely be standing or sitting on the edge of a, of a uh, uh, hill or a mountain, whatever. Practice that. Go ahead and sit on the ground, sit against a tree, whatever. But practice the, the uh, way you guys are going to hunt. I hope some of these tips were helpful to you guys today. I hope you'll stick around. We're getting really close to the season, so go ahead and take a few shots each week if you can, if you have a place you can get out. Take a few shots, stay in the rhythm, stay warmed up. Don't just go out on opening day after you haven't shot for two months and expect to have good results. You need to get that reputation up. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys on the next one.